This now severe flooding has caused extensive damage in the farming town of Rawsonville. Aid has reached the flood-stricken communities. Over a thousand residents have had to be accommodated in community halls and churches after their homes were flooded. Reporter Nobesutu Hejana is in Rawson to get us an update. Uh, Nobesutu, just tell me in terms of services, just basic services for the community of Rawsonville, um, what exactly is affected in terms of services there because of the flooding? So we do understand on Wednesday when those flooding um, took place here in Rosenville in an area called Spooky Town, the area was inaccessible and the people here, over 1,000 people, had to be evacuated to the nearby churches and also community halls. So we do know that the basic services could not reach the area. And at that time, those basic services would be blankets, uh, mattresses, food. So when they were evacuated and moved or housed, to local churches in the area on Monday, we saw that aid coming with the gift of the givers and also with various partnerships that include the local municipality and private donors assisting their communities. And where we are now, we are in Spooky Town in a household, the Jacobs household. Um, behind me, you can see they are still trying to do the mop-up operations. It was flooded here. I'm told by Julian the water was up to here from this bed structure. So what happened was on Wednesday they had to move and all they could take were the clothes that they were wearing and maybe collecting some of the few items that they were able to salvage. But we do know that those people are still being housed in that community church and at the moment Julian and his brother are still trying to clean the house. You can see things have been put aside because they still want to dry the floor and Julian is going to tell me about the impact, although we do see how this house was disrupted by the flooding. Julian, just take us through on Wednesday. Obviously, you were telling me you woke up in the early hours of Wednesday morning and the house was flooded. Tell us about the impact and how it will take you, how long it will take for the family to rebuild or to get back to your feet again. Probably, probably at the moment, as we are still busy, yeah. I think last uh, Wednesday uh, it was such a such a problem for us as family to wake up in this house full of water. And by the moment, all we can do we can't send our children to school. We must take them to our families to stay there for a problem uh, problems uh, for a time. Mm. But uh, as you can see, uh, we are still busy in it, and it will take us some time, three weeks, two weeks, to clean up this house home and get our, our lives back. Mm. And I do understand some family members are with other family not too far from here because mm. we do understand there's about nine people who are staying here. Mm. Tell us about the reason why maybe some of you did not want to go to that particular um, center, the church, because you do mention that there were concerns about healthy issues. Mm. We can't sleep, all of us people can't sleep in that hall because that hall is not too big. It's very big, but it's a small hall. And people are sick, we get... We get we have children and there are people that have TB, uh, such of some uh, disease of, of something. And our children see how we are scared for our children to get sick from other people. Mm. Tell me this morning, what are you doing this morning? Because I can still, you were telling me it will take you uh, probably two weeks or three weeks to clean. But obviously, w what are you able to pick up and put aside that was not damaged? Because I can see the washing machine hoping that it's still intact, it wasn't damaged by the flooding. Yeah, I'm still busy here yeah, with the washing machine, yeah, and even you can see my tax shop there, I have a tax shop. I am still busy to, to clean there, inside there. We can't do business because it's messy inside there. Mm. And then and, and some of this room shop, we yeah, are busy to clean, yeah. Mm. Tell me, obviously some of the people were telling me from the hall that uh, Usually when there is a disaster, especially in areas like Spooky Town that are close to the riverbanks, you would normally get aid from the disaster management team, which include sandbags yeah. and sand to also try to prevent water from coming to the houses. Have you received any of that? And maybe what is the plan? Yeah, I, all of the people in Spooky Town didn't receive some sand or probably anything from the municipality. The moment when the water comes here, 
our councillor and the, the, the management of the town, municipality. Only the thing that they were doing was doing, they was come here and, and walk here through the, the place and did nothing, no sin, no uh, uh, stones or anything to prevent the water from, the, from our house. Mm -hmm. We must do that shelf. That is all that we can do here. Mm -hmm. And the municipality officials are telling me that obviously there will be a meeting on Tuesday to discuss the future of the people who are being housed in community halls and churches. The possibilities include the permanent relocation of the people from Spooky's town. Is it something that you people or a resident are willing to do? Because I do understand many of the people here, they work in nearby farms. So should the municipality say people must be relocated to Vosta. Is it something that you think you'll be able to do? I won't be able to go to Vosta because my work is here and I can't go to Vosta and come dead from that side and go, come to, to Rosenwald to work here in Rosenwald. That will cost me a lot of money. And by the time, it will be a problem for myself to stay in Vosta. We have ground here in Rosenwald. There by here campus. There's the uh, municipal state ground that they can build for us houses on, but they don't want to do it because they are negotiating with uh, farm uh, people, bosses and things to, to get that, grow, that ground, but it's a municipal state ground. And we are still busy here outside now on the moment with a meeting here because of this situation. Thank you very much, Julian Jacobs, there, Maseho, telling us about the situation. Obviously, the municipality is saying that they don't have enough land here in Rosenville. Hence, they are opting to look, if it's possible, to relocate the residents of Spooky Town to Vosta. We're hearing from Julian that it's not a possibility for him because he works in the farms here, so it will cost him a lot of money. And we know that the residents of this particular area are seasonal farm workers. So at the moment, they are still trying to clean their houses and see what they are able to save following that devastation on Wednesday. All right, Nobisutu Hejana, live for us in Rawsonville. Let's leave it there for now. Time for a short